A subprocedure then is a block of statements enclosed by a declaration statement, often starting with the word sub, but not necessarily always, and an end statement. Um, different languages have different syntax. Um, C, C++ and Java, for example, use open and close uh, parentheses to indicate the beginning and end of a subprocedure, um, curly parentheses, rather than normal round ones. Um, but you will learn the syntax of different languages as you begin to pick them up. Subprocedures uh, can be invoked from any other place in a program code, and when the subprocedure has finished executing, it returns control to the code that invoked it. Uh, this is known as the calling code. So the calling code is a statement or an expression within a statement uh, that specifies the procedure by name and transfers control to it. So Procedure calls can be uh, on a line of their own, they can be part of um, a, a bigger function uh, or procedure or calculation. Uh, we can use them uh, pretty much anywhere. We can even call procedures from within procedures. Um, all programs have an entry point, um, so this is the first procedure to be executed by a program. And in some programming languages, you see this uh, as part of the code. Um, C, for example, has a main procedure, which is uh, where everything starts. Um, other programming languages that are often simpler and in interpreted um, hide this fact from you. Most languages will actually allow several types of procedures to be declared and used. However, we will use um, subprocedures to perform actions, um, but they don't return a value to, a call to the calling code. And next week, uh, we will move on and use um, function procedures, which actually return a value as well as returning execution to the calling code. Um, graphical user interface programming models automatically create other types of procedures. Event handling procedures to deal with program events such as clicking a mouse, um, moving over a, a particular element on the screen, um, hitting a key on the keyboard, those sorts of things. And there are other ones that we won't be using yet such as property procedures uh, which are specific to languages like VB uh, where we can return and assign values of properties on objects or modules. So every line of code in your application must be inside some procedure or other. Um, if nothing else, it'll be inside main, but it could be inside any procedure that you've created yourself or through some um, procedures which are created through the um, environment that you're using. For example, um, an on an o a click event um, if you're using Visual Basic or a similar language. So the main procedure is hidden from us in simpler languages like just basic. It's there, we just don't see it. If you subdivide large procedures into smaller ones, then your application is, uh, becomes more structured and ultimately more readable. You don't just do it willy-nilly, you um, identify the chunks of the program which perform specific tasks and those logically form um, appropriate parts of code that can be put into procedures. So procedures are useful for performing repeated or shared tasks such as frequently used calculations, text and control manipulation, or maybe reading and writing to and from files or to and from databases. And you can call a procedure from many different places in your code so that you can use procedures um, as building blocks for your application. Um, there's no point reinventing the wheel. If you've already written a piece of code once and it does a job very well, then you can reuse it if you need to do that job again. And it's very likely that you will reuse maybe with slight changes, sub-procedures from one program to another. And as you become more experienced as a programmer, your toolbox, if you like, of sub-procedures um, that you can use to um, do specific things becomes more sophisticated and programming becomes easier the more you do it. So I've already mentioned and shown how we can pass parameters across to a function to, uh, sorry, a procedure to alter its behaviour. Um, and we can pass multiple parameters. So we can pass one, none, or many um, parameters into a procedure for them to work with. And the previous example, we um, we used a value to um, count up in times tables. Um, we also used a value to output um, or control the squaring functions in a, in, a, in a procedure. We can actually pass in more than one procedure. So this next example will show you how to use um, two parameters. Uh, you can pass in pretty much as many as you need uh, but generally if you start passing in more than four or five things can become quite complicated um, so it, it, it might indicate that your program could do with restructuring. The exact syntax of how you write procedures and pass parameters 
um, across into them when you call a procedure differs. Um, generally the rules uh, whether or not you need brackets um, to enclose um, the procedure um, and the parameters for the procedure and also how the parameters are separated whether it be via spaces, commas or semicolons. Uh, usually you just declare them inside brackets or list them after the sub procedure name often separated by commas. So this is an example of an enhanced times table um, sub procedure we'll call it timetable2 and it takes in two parameters this time so we can see we've got i table and we've got i num. Uh, we're going to output the times table for i table and this time we're going to count up to num rather than counting up to 12 as we did as a default last time. So this indicates that we need to collect from the user an additional parameter i num. So let's have a look at that program in operation. Um, this is the program, this is the updated um, procedure call and we've added an extra line of code here to collect um, the second value that the user wants to enter and we store that as i num and then our procedure now calls timetable2 rather than timetable1 and it passes across two parameters separated by a comma uh, so how the parameters are declared here is pretty much the same as they are declared in the actual sub procedure itself so if we run this code uh, we'll print out the five times table and we'll count up to ten so we can see that that now does us uh, the time the five times table up to ten times five we'll do it again with the four times table and we'll go up to eight so you can see that they, that is differing so we've now created a more versatile um, sub procedure um, it can be used to control um, two aspects of, of of the function rather than just one so you might want to uh, copy that code across type that code in to your system and then maybe step through it and see how those two values are passed across and used